Thank you, Julia. So welcome also from my side to this webinar where we will have a panel discussion about what it's like to study a master's degree in the School of Business at Aalto University. So my name is Olivia and I will be the interviewer of today's event and with me I have three students um, in the panel. They will introduce themselves in a moment. So yeah, as Julia said, you can ask questions in the chat and then in the end we will have a Q&A session where we answer the questions. And also I would like to remind you that please don't ask any questions about uh, applying because those will be answered in a sep separate webinar on Thursday that admission services are hosting. So yeah. But let's start with our panelists. So could you please introduce yourself in the same order as the pictures? Thank you, Olivia. And hello, everyone. Very nice to have everyone here join. Uh, hopefully, we can we can answer all your questions successfully. Uh, but my name is Reeb. I'm studying master's in people management and organizational development. And um, first year student uh, doing, doing this master course. I've switched from a couple of, uh, well, in fact, from one uh, master's program to people management because I, you know, thought this would be the better one for for my career, and I can talk on later a little bit about uh, my main motivation there, and um, although has been quite incredible for me, it's it's been a no brainer why I've I've also picked the university, but uh, hopefully I'll I'll talk about this in the future slides. Um, but yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Olivia and Arib, and warm, warm greeting to everyone joining us today. My name is Ning Wing, and um, I'm a master, first year master's student in finance. And I came to Finland three years ago to accomplish my bachelor also at Alto University. And Alto has been also a very incredible, um, incredible journey for me as an international student. So I would love to share my experience with you here and welcome any questions you might have. Thank you. Yes. Thanks, uh, Olivia, Arib, and me. So hi, everyone. My name is Anastasia, or Anna, if it's easier. And I'm a second year master's student in accounting at Aldo. And I'm actually calling you from Austria, Vienna, where I am on exchange at the moment. And like Ni mentioned, I'm also very happy about studying at Aldo. So I'm really excited about all your questions. And I hope that I can help you to make up your mind about studying at Aldo University. Thank you very much for your introductions. So our first topic we will be discussing today is studies at Alto, uh, because Alto is home to unique study paths that you will get to hear. Um, so the first question is, why did you choose to study at Alto University? Uh, so Anna, would you like to start and share your experience? Yes, sure. So I think some of the main reasons I chose Alto is the um, interdisciplinary approach. So meaning that it is possible to take courses from different programs, it is possible to make up your schedule, the flexibility and the ability to kind of make up your perfect um, studies, and also the amazing uh, life apart from studies. So associations, clubs and volunteering. So Alto has it all, in my opinion. Interesting, thanks. Yeah, what about you, Arib? Yeah, I'll add to Anna's part. I mean, uh, multi uh, slash interdisciplinary thing is is uh, something that I resonate towards. I, I would also say the brand and kind of networks that you build through throughout though is integral. Like you get to meet, meet people who you wouldn't have thought really, you know, to meet before. It kind of forces you to go outside the box. Uh, so I've, like personally, I've had several events you know, one one was with a Nokia uh, alumni who, who studied at uh, who studied marketing um, at the at at Alta for a couple of years, and then he went on to did marketing and 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 did and shared all his experiences with us. So this mentoring, um, networking, kind of sharing and, and gaining experiences allows you to understand like you have you are going to have a life outside of Alto very soon, but Alto can set you up very nicely for that. Thank you. So what about you, Ni? Yes, I totally agree with um, Anna and Arib about 
but also uh, I can share my personal experience that first I chose Finland for studying because it's the happiest country in the world and I can guarantee you is, is this true and also also university is, uh, has a very good reputation and ranking um, and has all the facilities and community to support you not only thrive in your career path or your academic research path whatever you choose or options but also support you in your personal life and like you will feel very supported um, to achieve any goal you might have. And also the community of alumni is, is so incredible. Like every time I join some community or some, some uh, co company and I met some auto alumni there, they also welcome and help me a lot. So, yeah. Very interesting to hear your stories why you chose auto. Uh, so now that you have been studying here what would you say is the best part about studying at Aalto uh, so Arib would you like to go first sure absolutely and of course uh, we can relate to some of the some of the experiences that that me and Anastasia have shared you know previously but I would say is the quality of education uh, so you know in that Aalto can never really disappoint for all the courses that I have done I've studied at uh, Mikli uh, which was obviously another Alto campus, and I believe so has so has me. So we know that the the modules there are designed in a specific way to uh, ensure that people or students really engage in the classes, really go uh, to the lectures, and basically graduate if you have attended, you know, uh, the, the the live lectures. So the community uh, is really really good, in in, in my opinion. Uh, where you can, of course, make networks, but those networks will stay strong for, for a significantly uh, longer time. So networking is something I've enjoyed. And of course, the quality of education from different professors coming all over the, the, the world, in fact, to teach um, and to make sure that, you know, you are ready made uh, to a large extent for the new job that you take after graduating from out. Thank you. So what about you, Anna? Yes, I can totally agree with Arib. He mentioned very good points. What I can add as well is that to me, what I noticed from Aldo is that where, if you ever have any particular goals or desires, if you want to try something, you will always find it at Aldo. And I mean that both with the courses, with majors and minors, with the opportunities for career events, for the volunteering associations, I noticed that whatever I wanted to try, it's available. It's such a versatile school that you can always kind of find your passion. You can always find your circle. And maybe another thing is that Arib kind of already touched the community point and I can really support that. I noticed that Aldo has a very warm community, both from the students themselves and also from the personnel and the professors. I always felt welcome. I always felt like I could ask questions and kind of double check things. So it feels very uh, easy, but at the same time, exciting and versatile studying at Aldo. Nice to hear. Do you have anything you would like to add me? Yeah, I think I agree with all those points and I just want to support uh, the point is that the professors, they're very at high quality and high professionality and also they very support the student. Every time I have some questions, they are so ready to answer with high quality and also they already very supportive for my career path. They, they're ready to give you a ref reference letter if you need it for uh, to apply in some job so I really appreciate all the help from the professor here that's nice to hear so then we maybe touched this a bit on the first question but what made you want to study your field so Ni would you like to continue yeah sure so first of all mm, I'm waiting for the picture to appear, but <laughs> maybe it's a bit slow, the internet. Okay, so I can talk briefly, like as a finance student, many people think that we choose this career path for the money because a uh, finance student has a reputation of uh, doing it for the money. Uh, but uh, actually, it's not my main motivation to uh, study finance. Um, I think money is important, but um, finance really provide me with a 
a lot of opportunity for my career path. We can go very um, diverse uh, way for your career. And as a person who don't know what I want to do, finance is really the way to go if I want to change. And they provide me with a lot of transferable skill, like analytical skills and communication working under the pressure. So all of those skills are very beneficial for my career path. So that's why I chose finance. How was it for you, Arib? Um, yeah. let, me, let me tell you that it's not easy to, to choose a career path, even though you're doing your master's degree. Like people are still uh, uncertain about what they want to do. And if you're in that place right now, it's completely okay. Uh, you know, for some of us, it's, it's a lot more clear when we enter our university degrees and start our courses. I believe that's the case for me. So when I started, it was, it was actually engineering, uh, not at Alta University, but somewhere else. But then it was international business. And having done that for a couple of years, uh, Ni would also, I'm sure she would, she would, call, she would like appreciate what I say, like international business sets you up for, for several other modules and several other like programs. So I chose management because I thought I really want to work with, with the, with, you know, people in the field, understand their problems, help organizations perform, you know, better, uh, take, take more contribution into the human resource part. So for me, it was a bit more of an easier thing uh, to do. That's why I basically changed from information service management, which is one of the programs that, that Alto provides, which is also, by the way, really, really good uh, to people management and organizational development. So for me, it was, was always very clear. Um, but, you know, there was always there was always a bit of an issue like, OK, what should I do? Should I choose marketing? Should I choose management? Uh, should I choose finance? So if you're in that situation, then the best thing to do is, is choose international business. But if you know, obviously, what you want to do, in terms of engineering or arts um, or something else, then you can uh, stick to that field. Good advice. How about you, Anna? Yes, I can totally relate to Arib and me. And I can second the point about the challenge of choosing the program, as Arib mentioned. Actually, in fact, I used to study uh, something different than accounting in my bachelor's. So I wasn't actually at Aldo. I was studying supply chain management. And the way I chose my uh, major now is that I was working for a bit. And I noticed that I like accounting uh, tasks that I had. And uh, another reason I chose accounting is that uh, we say in our program that it's like a language of business it's pretty universal it's pretty important and if you study accounting you can also choose uh, between several fields what i also like is that some people were kind of joking to me that you know accounting is a bit boring like stereotypically but in fact what i noticed is that um we have like a few modules so you can actually focus on specific area of accounting and you also learn it from the management perspective and you can do like i'm doing sustainability accounting which is very interesting so maybe one point is that when you choose something it doesn't mean you'll stick to the very kind of uh, narrow field or very stereotypical field you can kind of um, take courses within that program and you can also choose a minor so actually when i was studying i chose my minor to be strategy and a little bit big data so you can always kind of diversify your choice even if you made the selection that's what i could maybe say from my side that's also good advice thank you i'll, I'll maybe add one more point yes, uh, to this I, I guess now the pictures that me ones that are coming up uh, yeah. but that's actually very very true what anastasia said in your work life as well because i've, I've started working basically from, from two years now i felt that a lot of employees and colleagues uh, even if you work in the operations side for a year or two, you would want some other experience. So having that sort of experience from accounting or, you know, doing some finance stuff or having basically hands-on experience with, with other domains, you know, helps your competence and, and kind of understanding the business better. So it, it, it will depend on what kind of a person you are really, whether you want to focus on one thing entirely for the rest of your career, that's also okay. But if you're more hands-on, if you want to try on different things, then it's really good to have that attitude that, you know, like I will, I will do one thing for sure, which is my main responsibility, but I want to try out, for example, accounting, or I want to try out, um, you know, operations management, uh, which you can also do within, within your new uh, work life. Yeah, that's true. Absolutely. So, yeah, here was the <laughs> pictures. Yeah. Well, Next question is, uh, what's your studies like? So maybe you could describe a bit how 
the courses are? Is it seminars, exercises, or group work? Um, so yeah, uh, Anna, would you like to say something about your courses? Yeah, sure. Uh, so I think I had quite a healthy mixture of all types of courses, but maybe something I would add is that you're always kind of able to influence which courses you're taking. So even though there are a few compulsory ones in each degree program, you can still choose based on the course description, the professor and other details. So I actually decided to have a few uh, like project courses, which is more applied, where you actually do something for the company itself, then something a little bit more like exam oriented. There are some courses where you just have an exam in the end. And I had a few, which is maybe the majority, where you had uh, a lot of group work, a little bit of interactions, and a tiny part of the course was the exam. So I think Alto has quite a nice balance with like interactions, collaborations, and not too much focus just on the exam in the end, which is nice, in my opinion. Yeah, that sounds nice. Is it the same for uni and the Reeb? Yeah, definitely. And I also want to add that all of my courses have been organized in a way that their classroom dynamic is very innovative and encourage you to uh, speak up your voice and without being cheered. And that way you can um, build your analytical and critical thinking skills. And it's very good for um, my like self-development. So you will like practice a lot your communications in classroom and how to work with um, diversity with me in that because Alto University, I feel that it's a very international centric um, school, which means that you will meet and work with people with different culture and background. So it's a very important aspect and very interesting aspect because you will learn people have different perspective and you know, that's what my study has been like exposing to a diversity and critical thinking. Nice. Yeah, I, I can I can add to that and yeah, like very strong points. You also have a chance to do your exchange studies like Anastasia, for example, is, is, is doing right now. So Alto has a huge sort of collaboration list with with really good um, university places, you know, including from Australia to the US to the UK um and also even even in, in some uh countries in, in in africa as well if you want to go there uh so a lot of lot of different opportunities for you to do basically i believe an exchange semester which is about uh 30 credits or depending on depending on on the program that you take uh some of the courses that i'm taking right now so for people people management uh courses include like strategic people management organizational development um, even data analytics, uh, quantitative methods, qualitative methods. Um, you know, you have, we, have, we have to do a thesis as well towards the end of our studies, which is 30 credits itself. Uh, and as, as already my, my sort of colleagues have pointed out that the electives are there. So you can take various different electives from as, as, as a minor or uh, electives from other, other programs. So for example, I have basic course in programming uh, into intellectual property rights, uh, managing mergers and acquisition, which is closely related to both finance and accounting. Uh, so really depending on what your interests are, where you want to sort of broaden into and expand your knowledge towards, you can take your, your minor. If you want to just have fun or learn a new language, it's also possible. So very multidisciplinary. Thank you. Yes, so we already maybe said something about this, but would you say that there are multidisciplinary opportunities in your study? So is it something you would like to add here? I can I can start with this slide because I added these these two uh, photos and uh, the first one is of a good life engine, basically out of ventures program as a whole other student student based um, sort of, you know, association that organizes different different events uh, both internally and, and externally so very very good events about uh, networking about uh, healthy well life and sort of balancing studies and, and work life so for example this is one of the overcoming anxiety which is actually happening in, in, a, in a few days for I believe it's for for our like students so I believe it's an internal event the second thing here is the Alto uh, investment club uh, unfortunately, they have all their, or well, I would say almost almost all their events in Finnish, 
but uh, the perspective is really good. So a lot of collaborations with, for example, companies like Nordia, uh, really good guest speakers teaching how to invest and, and learn the basics of, of investing. So these are some opportunities that you have. So both student associations and then courses within student associations. Um, what do you think, uh, Ni, Ni and Anna? Um, yeah, if I stepped in for just for a second, I think that Arab gave a really good overview for that slide. Um, something to add as well that, um, for example, um, accounting in my accounting studies, uh, it seems like enge some engineering subjects go quite well with accounting. So I actually have students in my team who are studying uh, some industrial engineering management or other things as a minor or actually as a double degree. So I do think that multidisciplinary uh, aspect is definitely in Aldo and definitely a lot. I also have one example of a friend who studies business, but minors in quantum mechanics, which has nothing to do like when you think about it with business studies, uh, like originally when you think about it, but actually it makes so much sense because you can kind of find your interests and it can be very helpful for your career path so i can definitely say that there is a lot of multidisciplinary things and like arip mentioned as well apart from minoring or majoring you can actually get some knowledge from those clubs like aldo investment club or another one. So you don't have to necessarily take uh, classes at the school. You can actually take part in those events, which are kind of, you know, sometimes more chill and fun, sometimes more formal. And that way you kind of get a more perspective on other fields at uh, studies at Aldo as well. Yeah, I totally agree with Anna and Arif. I can also add um, that uh, by joining the board of the clubs, you can also gain like multidisciplinary experience because you can do like different tasks in a in a board. So it will give you like um, and also you can learn from your fellow in the in the board of a club. So there's a lot of thing we do and we function like a like a real organization, a corporate working with uh, different key stakeholders. So that definitely a very good uh, multi uh, disciplinary opportunity during your studies besides studying. Absolutely, yeah, I totally agree with you here. So then this one might be interesting. Uh, what, what is your course load like and how is the study year uh, built up at Aldo? Like how many courses do you have to take and so on? So yes, uh, Anna, would you like to explain a bit? Yeah, sure. I can give a small overview of what kind of master's uh, workload or the like uh, template of studies looks like. So normally we have uh, two semesters at Aldo and they're split into five periods, five study periods. Each period is approximately six to seven weeks. And there are normally two periods uh, during the fall semester, which is September to end of December. And then three periods during the spring semester, which is a bit longer. And then you also have summer, which is, if I remember correctly, one or two periods, which is kind of like this uh, summer study time. And normally uh, you you are recommended to have 60 ECTS uh, per year and approximately 30 ECTS per semester or like 12 or something 15 ECTS per period. Uh, however, I think this is, in my opinion, really flexible, first of all, because you have so many study periods, so you're actually able to balance things out. Like I can give my own example that I've been taking a little bit more courses last year. So all my compulsory courses, all my major, and now that I'm on exchange, I'm actually taking not 30 ECTS, but 24. And then when I'm back, I'm also having less because I would like to focus on uh, a, like a few smaller things. So you're kind of able to pace things uh, out very well. And you can take a lot of courses in summer as well. If, for example, you're working in fall or winter and you prefer to have less classes. Thank you. That was a really good explanation. Uh, do you have anything you would like to add, Ni or Arib? Well, I would I would say that for my master's studies, uh, I spent approximately, it depends on person, but uh, uh, I'm taking two courses now and I spend around like only four, like over 30, 40 hours for studying. So I still have a lot of time to engaging in like um, working in board of student club or working part-time if you want to do internship alongside your study and it's totally possible. 
That's actually very, very true. So um, I'll add to that, that, for example, you have to talk to your study uh, coordinator, especially for master students like your, your coordinators. And uh, they basically know that you will have full time opportunities with different companies and you will most likely kickstart your career. So I spoke uh, to my you know, uh, operations director or, or coordinator that I will be you know, working full time. So this is how I will basically uh, do my studies. And um, this does not apply if, 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 let's say, you are an international student has been, and you've been granted um, you know, the, the scholarship. So then it's a bit more strict for you. You, ha you have to complete 60 credits uh, per academic year. But if you are from the EU and you haven't, haven't uh, come on scholarship, it's, it's going to be a bit more flexible for you, as Anastasia already said. Um, so just talk to your study coordinator. For me, my, my course load therefore is, is a bit lower. So I'm taking like just between 15 to 20 credits uh, per semester. Um, so I'm having like around 40 to 45. I think the minimum minimum is 45, but I'm having around that to make sure that I kind of at least finish my master's program. Thank you, very good answers. So then we move on to how a typical day could look like. So Anna, could you explain us some more about your schedule? Sure. So maybe one heads up is that it's my schedule during exchange studies, not actually studies at Aldo. But the good thing is that it's pretty similar because my university in Austria is kind of similar in the way of uh, studies as Aldo. So just to give a short overview, like normally I'm the owl, but I try to be an early person because most of my fitness classes that I signed up are very early in the morning. So I've been waking up much earlier than usually for that. So my day has been starting more with like wellness, so to say. And after lunch, I've been uh, after breakfast, sorry, I've been having lectures. So uh, you at VU, where I study, which is at Vienna, it's a bit similar system as Aldo. So you have lectures, which are a few hours uh, a day. It's not the whole day. They're very interactive, which is why after lunch, we have a lot of group work. So the lectures themselves don't take a lot of your time in semester, but you have to meet uh, apart from the lectures with your groups and get the work done because there are a lot of projects and uh, courses are graded a lot on that. Then, um, actually, me already mentioned about the boards, and in fact, we are together with her in one uh, association, Women of Alta, in uh, Alta University, and I'm also at the board of the organization in Vienna now. So I've been doing some activities um, there as well, which is a bit of project management and things like that, which was very interesting to get to know Vienna that way as well. And then the evenings are, you know, sometimes chill times, meeting with friends, doing something else and then hopefully going to sleep on time to be able to wake up so early in the morning. That's my routine. Thank you, very interesting to hear. So now we will move on to our next topic, which is the campus in Otaniemi. So as you can see on the picture, um, the campus is surrounded by nature, but it's only a 10 minute metro ride away from the Helsinki city center. And we also have like a metro station in one of the buildings, so it's really convenient. Um, but yeah, what is the campus like? Like, could you tell a bit about the location, the school facilities and what kind of services like shops and restaurants there are? So, uh, Ni, would you like to start? Yeah, so uh, our campus is very huge very big with a lot of buildings and all I, I like the fact that all the buildings is in the same location so got a chance to meet um di different people from different um studies during lunch and also there are a lot of uh, re restaurants in the campus so you can go to have lunch very quick quickly and they provide um different type of food so you will not get bored and also there are a lot of um, facilities for uh, for studies, group work, um, different type of um, study room with different facilities to support your studying. And also there is the uni sport inside the campus so you can go to gym very quickly. And I, I know that there are some buildings that have like sauna inside and it which are like amazing. Um, but it's a very huge campus and provide you with everything you need for studying and um, daily life activities. I'd like to think that it's like a small 
city with like for, you don't have to go anything else, anywhere else to enjoy uh, your life in Finland so it's very convenient yeah it's really true everything you need is on campus um so Arib or Anna do you have anything you would like to add or do you I can say a few 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 words uh, so need is very very well I'll just say it's basically like a student village so you know you're meeting all your friends who live well relatively close to you or or maybe maybe even in the same apartment and you you know you have a 10 minute or a five minute or if you're really close to, to the campus then only a couple of minutes um walk to the campus and and you you attend the lectures there uh very nice uh, sort of equipments so you can even borrow like mac studios you can even record a podcast uh under, under the library so you know there's a library and uh, like on the on the downmost floor uh there's like nice visual studios where you can record yourself or even take uh photography classes to you know as as an hobby so some very nice equipment the business building uh or i should say the very building because it consists of the design uh students and, and design part as well uh has like really really good you know atmosphere in terms of you being able to study independently book rooms to 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 uh work on projects uh, with your groups um and apart from that there there are obviously other campuses that that include engineering um that include you know different different tech uh stuff as well so overall very nice uh, my first sort of feeling when i came to the vade building which is the business building which contains you know most of the grocery stores and and of course the metro station as well i was like it's very lucky because we we moved uh or the actually the campus was built in around 2018 um, if i'm correct and our studies at the at the business uh, business building vade building started in 2019 so uh, very very happy with how everything is structured nice to hear so then we can move on to what your favorite thing about the campus is and i see some nice pictures here as well so if you would like to add some comments to those it would be nice also yeah maybe i can add a small comment because two of those pictures are mine uh, so maybe to describe it briefly the favorite thing is that you can actually find anything you want on campus. And that's why I put those uh, few pictures um, to show that, for example, the right picture is the is like lunch that I had. And uh, we have, I don't even know actually how many student cafeterias at the campuses. It's, if you guys know, actually feel free to interrupt me, but it's like countless. You have vegetarian, vegan options, regular canteens, you have a la carte, so you don't even essentially have to go anywhere else. You can just have your breakfast, lunch and dinner here. And the picture on the left is actually a party, which is on campus as well. So not only we study at the campus, it's kind of like a village, you know, Otaniemi village. So you get also the sport facilities and also all the fun things. So everything is basically there from the serious stuff to something a bit more fun and informal. Nice to hear. Um, what about you, Arib and me? Yeah, I totally agree. Well, I think most of uh, one of my favorite things about the campus is the architecture feel very modern and I don't know, just just beautiful. I took a lot of nice pictures there, so <laughs> nice. And you, Arib, what's your favorite thing? Um. It, it it has to be you know coming back to to my previous point the the kind of facilities that Alpha provides I feel like it's uh, not really easily matched by other universities uh, including the University of Helsinki in in Finland so I I really have to say I'm, I'm exceptionally proud of as students what we what we get to use and um, the kind of time that we get to spend with our peers and of course building the network but uh but it has to be the kind of facilities that Alta provides even when i went to exchange uh, to the uk so that was at the nottingham university the Not nottingham trend university uh they had really nice facilities but uh, not as good as alto you know so Alta does have the best and that's probably why it's ranked in in the top 100 kind of like all-time rankings or at least close to, to top 100 and both the business and uh, arts um programs are ranked within the top basically like top 
60 or 70. The top arts is ranked top 10, I believe. So um, very, very good. Yeah, yeah, I can also agree. I really like the facilities of Alta. So our next topic we will be discussing is housing and student benefits. So in Finland, students are entitled to many benefits that we will talk about now. Um, but first, uh, what kind of housing opportunities are there for students? And how was it for you looking for uh, housing? Was it difficult? Um, so, me, how was it for you? Yeah, I was very lucky with my housing in Finland. Like, I always got a very good location and very good um, house with a very affordable prices. I also have this thing, uh, HOAS and AYY, for providing me with a very affordable price for a lot of support for students that everything typically everything is included in the price rent already so it's kind of like hatching you against the everything happened outside of work can make the uh like the electricity can go like double or triple but we wouldn't be affected by that so i feel so grateful <laughs> and also like the student housing is super super nice like you may expect like it's no student housing so it's not as good as normal housing but actually like all the house here are very in good quality and they are um got maintained very well over the years so um it's very very um good for me so far it, i have no difficulty in not looking for the house so far in finland really nice to hear um what about uh, aribs and anna's experiences were they also good I'll just add shortly that the prices are, are really affordable, as as Nee said. So, you know, between 250 to 600 euros. And it was funny because I was talking to my CEO, like just having casual chat. And he had also, also been to Alto University. And he was telling me, like, the prices are incredibly affordable for students compared to, like, normal citizens who are, who are working. Uh, because, like, normally you would probably pay up to a thousand or even more for, for a nice studio, you know, somewhere, especially in the center or even in Otaniemi nowadays. But now for students, they are just half the price pretty much, or even like a third of the price uh, if you are, you know, co-sharing a room. So uh, take advantage of that for, for the next two to three years because you, you'll be saving a lot of money. Um, and um, yeah, the housing, you know, you just, you just need to, for, for me, you just need to apply uh soon enough with your with your friend if you want to apply together or alone if you apply obviously alone you might get it uh, faster so we applied basically in april and uh, we got we got in the queuing line for aiy and basically received an offer in august and it was not the best place like just the apartment wise it was close to the to the uh campus so it's in seven mile but um but overall, like affordability was incredible. So we got it by by August. Uh, so it took us like, you know, four months to to get the offer. So that's the general uh, life cycle. Yeah, and one point I want to add is that um, like the, you can send um, like some email to HOAS if you like need it in emergency. So they will consider like emergency case to make sure you will not be homeless in Finland. And compared to other countries in Europe, because my friend also have like very hustle and challenging situation for the housing in other European countries, and the price is like incredibly, incredibly like higher there compared to in Finland. So that's a point to note. Yes, I can totally agree with me and Arip about the pricing because just recently we had uh, like an international students presentations in my German class and we were supposed to discuss our student life and the answers I got about the housing were unbelievable uh, comparing to Finland. I mean, it was like 800 euros for a room in some uh, European cities. So then I realized so well what the guys just mentioned that it is so cheap to actually leave on campus and live in Helsinki with like using the student organizations. And maybe one little personal tip I would give uh, when you get an offer from either HOAS, and by the way, HOAS means like this kind of uh, student Helsinki uh, apartment organization for students, and AYY is actually an uh, apartment uh, organization from Aalto University. When you get an offer, even if you don't like the offer, try like 
try really not to reject it. If you reject your first offer, it might set you back on the queue for up to a year. It can be a few months, but it can be forever. So some students have been really kind of suffering that consequence because they rejected the place because it was a bit too far, maybe it wasn't nice, but I would really suggest to pick a place that you got, pick an offer, and then uh, reapply at the same time for the transfer. Because if you already have a place, it's much easier to get transferred within much shorter period of time. That's really good advice. Thank you. So then moving on, uh, what would you say? Is it easy to get to campus like in general? Uh, or what's your, what's your experiences? I, I can go first on this. So basically I've highlighted the second picture, the bottom most picture as the regions uh, in Usima, in which is basically the capital region. Uh, so the university is located in the C region, but some students might live in regions, you know, A, B, um, or even, even in Vanta uh, to, to get to ESPO. Um, so the, the commute is very easy. Students uh, basically pay 34 50 so 34 35 euros per month uh, to to commute and have access like a monthly uh, transport public car to use metro and all in fact all the public transport services um, metro is the best way to, to commute from the center and from other places and of course there are uh, buses that go you know from from other closer places in in, in espo if, if you want to get to if you want to use those otherwise there are um, some nice cycles like they have these alepa uh, cycles which you can again buy 30 euros like seasonally so you get it from from may to to end of september and um that's a, that's again very affordable and otherwise there are nice electric scooters as well which you can book depending on how 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 convenient how far you're living from from the campus um so overall very easy uh I, I feel anyway, public transportation in Finland is one of the one of the best uh, in in the world. Uh, so it makes it very, very easy for students and for the general public to commute. Thank you. That's very nice. Um, I think we can take the next question. So uh, what kind of student benefits are there? For example, if you could talk a bit about the Frank app maybe? Um, so, uh, Anna, would you like to explain a bit the student benefits? Uh, yeah, sure. So um, I think like uh, Ari, by the way, mentioned in the last slide, uh, the transportation for students is approximately 35 euros a month, which is, I think, 45% cheaper than the normal ticket. So that is the first benefit, which is very visible for, uh, for a student. Next, uh, the lunches uh, at the student cafeterias. So they're also subsidized by the government. So um, I actually, I'm not sure if it's going to be raised, by the way, feel free to correct me, but at uh, before I left on the exchange, it was 270 for uh, every single lunch around the whole Finland. So you could actually, by the way, like as a tip, even if you're traveling to like another city in Finland, like Tampere or Turku, you could go to the another university or University of Applied Sciences and you can eat your lunch there. And it's always going to be 270 or a bit higher if it's, if it's raised. And then yeah. the a la carte lunch, yes. Yeah, yes. I think it's raised now by 50 cents, but it's still yes. cheap. Yes, yes. Okay, good to know. So it's 320 now. Yes. All right. And lastly, uh, just to briefly touch that as well, what Olivia said, the Frank app. So you can download the Frank uh, app, which actually um, entitles you to all of those discounts that I told you about. You can just like show your app to the school cafeteria or somewhere else. And the app also has other offers. They are always getting updated and there are always new things. For example, you know, you can get a discount for a Netflix subscription or some uh, cafeterias uh, like private uh, restaurants or bars, some clothing shops. I've been using some cosmetics uh, shops as well with a frank discount. So it has a lot of offers like all together. So it's very easy to see them and to apply them in your daily life. That's really true. Thank you for your explanation. Yeah. Um, so yeah, sorry. Um, I think we have to move on to career opportunities. So we also have time to go through our following topics and the questions. Um, so yeah. Uh, just uh, shortly, is it possible to combine 
studies with work. Um, so what do you what do you say, uh, Arib, for example? Yeah, um, yeah. So this was <laughs> I did this slide. I was like, yes, and stop. Um, it's it's not easy, but it's possible, right? So again, my my point of talking to your your operations uh, program coordinator is so important. Um, and I basically started working at this company, Integrify, um, which basically educates people for for coding. And I basically made sure that 60% of my entire week or 70% went into full-time, you know, uh, work. And then the rest of the time I, I did a bit of overtime. I mean, for myself personally, but it was towards studying and making sure that I had the completed credits done. Um, so it's so important to both talk to your employer that you, Hey, you're going to be studying, uh, so you set your expectations, right. And so on. So, yeah, I basically worked for, for a year at Integrify basic and now moving to, to a new, uh, company, which is actually the, the company below there it's called Oivan. And, um, I intend to do the same thing. Most companies are really flexible uh, and they understand that students want to finish their degree, uh, and they value that as well. So they give some, they gave some time off according to the law you actually have like if you're if you're working even part-time uh you can have 30 days uh paid leave uh from from your company if you're of course your employer has to agree to it but you can still ask for it so uh very flexible overall to to combine the studies and work thank you do you have anything to add me or anna and um, I think I have one thing to add is that uh, Alto provide you with a lot of opportunity to maybe write your thesis or doing like project, a paid project with like company. So it's a very good opportunity to like combine study with your work and gain some like corporate experience before you graduate. Yes, I think the uh, guy said it pretty well, uh, just to add that in my accounting degree, almost everybody I know is working part time. So just to kind of add on this point that, yes, many people are actually working on the side of studying. Yes, that's very good to know. Um, so then also, uh, just quickly, what kind of career opportunities are there for students, but also recent graduates, if you have any examples or? So, yeah, so yeah. actually I added those pictures, maybe I can say a few words. Okay. Um, so yes, I would say that um, there are several ways to search for jobs. Uh, one of them is the job teaser, which is the platform offered by Aldo, where you can actually uh, enter all of your information, your, add your CV, and then you will see all different kinds of jobs which are out there. And you can just apply to them through that. And by the way, you are also going, uh, you, you have the opportunity to get the counseling from the Aldo uh, staff. So you can also get CV uh, workshops, uh, cover letter workshops, Shops and kind of get better at applying before you start uh, sending your uh, documents. Another way is also the student fairs. And the picture below is from, I think, from this Aldo student fair, because there are actually multiple of them. There are also kind of like Helsinki level student fairs or ESPO level, and also locally by Aldo. And uh, one thing to add as well is that, in my opinion, there are two very big recruitment times especially for summer jobs and uh, like student internships. One of them is usually in September and the other one in January, approximately for one month each. So if you want to find a job, I would strongly suggest to kind of start checking the offers during those two periods of time to be able to land yourself a job like uh, when you want to start it in the future. Really good advice. Thanks. Um, me and Arib, anything you would like to add? Yeah, I can add a few words there as well. Like, um, I think Auto University has a very strong relationship with corporates, not only on the university level, but also like student community level, in the sense that a lot of um, subject uh, clubs, of subject students, student clubs, for example, like auto finance or auto investment, they have a lot of uh, events throughout the years, collaborating with like um, big companies in that field to uh, organize 
uh, many type of event for students. So students can go there to network with the people from the company to get to know um, if you fit in with their um, culture and also what type of um, requirement they want from their future employees. So uh, it's a very good opportunity for you to network. And I think that the career opportunities are very uh, unlimited. Uh, you can explore many, many um, career paths for your career. And also, I think not only for the corporate career path, but if you also like want to become a researcher, uh, Alto has a lot of opportunity for you to uh, study um, postdoc or uh, continue after your master if you want to do research. And I also know like some people who do a uh, postdoc continue to become like a professor at the university. So um, there are like different type of uh, career opportunity provided for you at Alto. Very good advice. Thank you. So now our following topic is student life. And I think Finland and Alto is quite known for its student life. Um, but what is this student culture actually like? Um, so Arib, would you like to to start? Yeah, absolutely. So every every sort of program, uh, or even in fact every every program, yeah, program is as such has a guild, and we have this green, uh, or, well, dark green uh, guild that says it was founded in 1911, which is the KY Association, so the KY Student Association um you know well, kind of sponsors or is, is is the main association for, for the for the whole business programs and they have also many career opportunities within within there uh but you know for for students in in business but of course for students at alto there are several other associations that that exists and one was the alto uh, investment club but here are actually a couple of other uh clubs as well uni sport is in fact one of, one of the one of the gyms which you can get for a really affordable price for the entire year um but some other associations like effective altruism finland i actually don't know the other two associations maybe maybe me and anna can help me out here uh but i've been part of a lot of other other associations like alto marketing squad um and women's of alto as well which i know one of my one of my close friends she's the president there um there was also many hobbies that that you can do of course there are you know a lot of student uh, communities and, and and parties that happens uh, every, every other week or every week even so yeah, there's a lot of chance to to network but um yeah i'm not sure what, what these other two associations are I, I would like to know as well Um, yeah, so I think Arib actually covered things pretty well, and the other two associations, so one is, uh, I just added it because I'm interested to try out the free class from them, it's this Otanko, which is like the pole dancing class, so it's uh, this association with the, these different kinds of dancing, and the other one, uh, was it effective altruism you were wondering about, or? Um, uh, no, it was it was the, the one below that, like below Unisport. Um, the Women of Aldo. Oh, is it the woman of Alto? Yeah, this okay. is the woman of Alto. Oh, yes. Okay, yes. I, I don't even know the logo. <laughs> yeah, that's how okay. everybody knows about this. <laughs> yes, because me and I are also part of this board, so that's why, like, I kind of added this uh, this picture to show. No you. way! Okay. Oh shit! Okay, she's gonna be really ang angry at me. Like, no <laughs> was it a webinar? I didn't recognize your logo. Yes. But nice. Also, like, if I give a short comment, is that what maybe surprised me and also made me too overwhelmed is that when I went on all the website to check for student culture or student associations, there are so many of them that you literally get overloaded because you might think, you know, you have a few interests, but you might still have like five, six, ten, and you actually have a club or association for every single one of them. I suggest you later to look it up yourself on the web page. There are just so many which is a good thing but also a bad thing because you kind of have to you know choose what you like but one way that I would suggest you to explore that all of that endless uh culture is that you could come to this um, which is Ota, uh, orienteering, which is an event in the beginning of your studies. So when you get onboarded as a student, uh, you can come to that event, which lasts for two days, and all the associations are going to come outside with their stands, and you can actually hear about each of them, play in some ga games, get some presents, and kind of get to know those organizations and the people who are working there as volunteers. 
Yeah, that's really true. There are something for everyone, some kind of association. Yes, so just quickly, if you would like to add um, what you do in your free time, apart from the student associations. Like what are the uh, happening on the pictures, for example? Uh, yes, okay, I, again, my pictures, but I'll try to talk a bit quicker. Uh, yes, so I just added a few from my life at Alto, which is both formal and informal. So, for example, the picture down right is from this Alto well-being events, which I really recommend you if you start signing at Alto. It's like usually one week full of uh, this relaxing well-being themed events. And this one was uh, wine and paint. And it was actually so relaxing and it kind of helped me, you know, to clear my head up from the studies and also actually the one on the left down left is from this alto revive which is also kind of this relaxation or like a, a calming focused events by alto entrepreneurship society and here i went to nuxio with some people and we did some uh, canoeing and it was really great and then on the top there is just an event from vapu which is like a first of may um, event and it's a very big celebration for students in Finland so I'm just here with some friends in the park and there were a lot of people there so it's very fun time. Nice to hear thank you. So then we will move on to Alto community because Alto is home to a diverse and multidisciplinary community of students, staff and faculty but as you heard earlier. So how was it when you started at Alto? How were you welcomed? by the community and i really like the pictures here yes uh yeah we were partying in those pictures so <laughs> uh before coming to finland i really um i'm really afraid because it's so different from my country and i'm afraid that it, i wouldn't be able to blend in but actually uh my journey in finland has been incredible so far thanks to this international friend that i have made and they've been with me through thick and thin in the last three years so um, the first picture is when they saw me a like surprise birthday party, which is like super uh, heartwarming, especially uh, at um, uh, as an international student in a foreign countries when you make like friends, not just like during a study, but they still be my friend even after school, after I graduate from the bachelor um, degree, and we continue to hang out until now. So. Yeah, don't worry. Just uh, I think like Finnish people can be a little bit reserved uh, at first, but uh, when you actually could um, know them and become friends with them, they are like the best friend in the world. And you know, just um, make the first move and you're going to be fine. Very nice to hear. So did you have similar experiences, uh, Arib and Anna? I can tell a little bit uh, about my experiences. Um, we also threw, by the way, a surprise birthday party to to one of our friends as well. So uh, I guess that's that's part of making friends and 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 kind of like involving. The best way to describe it is everyone has has a designated tutor, uh, depending on 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 the program uh, as well. So it's the job of the, the tutors to kind of you know uh, make sure everyone is feeling welcomed. Um, so for for instance, for for us. For, for, for me, it was basically one of the tutors welcoming us to their house, guiding us around the city. Um, and there was only like six or seven of us, you know. And it was it's funny because two of the two of my friends who I met within that tutor group are actually closest friends that we're still in touch with. So a lot of memories uh, to share with and um, first impressions do count. So try to make the most out of it, uh, especially when, when you are kind of getting your own getting your onboarding done because those will be your valuable friendships uh, going into the future. Yes, I think the guy said it really well, so not much to add, but I also agree that it's good to be open minded, be open for new contacts and not be afraid to be curious, ask questions and approach people. I think that's going to help. But otherwise, if you are open, you will be very easily integrated into other community and meet a lot of friends. Really nice to hear. So, yeah, here is a bit what we talked about in the previous question, but what is it like to be an international student 
at all though. So, uh, are we or me? <laughs> Yeah, I, I can start because yeah. this is my picture. So uh, first, I feel like I belong to a community, a very supportive community, community who like always like you will be supported to achieve any goal you have, not only like personal goal, but also like in your career and any goal in your life, then you're going to be very supportive. And I feel very supported. And it's very important as an international student to feel that you feel supported in a foreign country, far away from your home country. And the third thing is uh, the diversity. I, I really embrace the diversity uh, in our community because you know the feeling that you're not the only international student here, and uh, it's very open-minded uh, experience for me because I got to talk with a lot of people from different background and culture. So it's been very supportive, more motivating, and eye-opening so far as an international student at Alto University. Very good to hear. Uh, do you agree, Arib and Anna? Anna, would you like to add? I already said my points. Last one. Yeah, yeah I think also it was really well said. So I, I don't have anything to add. I totally agree with me with these comments. Yes. Then, uh, do you think it's possible to survive without speaking Finnish in Finland? So I think their data has speak for itself. Uh, Finland score very high in their bet in this speaking uh, country. So you will have no problem uh, in um, the country with only uh, English. Um, you don't have to know Finnish. I even in your um, daily life, when you go to the police station or supermarket, everyone speak English so well. And uh, also I always blame my Finnish friend for speaking English so well that I couldn't learn any Finnish in my three years here. So that just, um, yeah, you totally could um, survive without knowing any Finnish. I guess this is the this is the good side to it. And I mean, mostly in Scandinavian countries, you, you don't need to know the language. Um, and you get by easily because, you know, in education, they obviously teach from, from primary school and upwards. Uh, all, all the children how to speak uh, English. Uh, the only way you might feel it is when you apply for jobs and you might not you might not know the local language, which is of course in this case Finnish. Um, uh, but I would say, especially in the past five to ten years, even that factor is being a little eliminated. So people are valuing how the personality is like and the actual person do the job well instead of speaking Finnish. But yes, of course, in some languages, sorry, in some jobs you might need to know. Finish, especially if it's a human resource job um, or if it's maybe maybe a technical job even and you need to work with clients that are that no finish so in that case you should some you should put some time aside into learning finish at alto because alto obviously offers free courses that are really really good um, and getting to that b1 level is not that hard um, i would say I've, I've seen people learn you know b1 b2 finish within a year um, or less if you are going to be very motivated. Uh, but if you're lazy like me, you don't need to you know, finish to, to get around and apply for jobs. You just need to become really good at what, what you do. Um, so yeah, learning finish is not the most important part. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't totally agree with the guys. I think that uh, answering to the question, surviving without Finnish is definitely possible and totally doable. Even the websites of many organizations are translated to English. Some organizations, even like Kella, which is this governmental one, they even have other languages apart from Finnish, Swedish and English. But yes, I would also say that in the long run, if you would like to stay in Finland, it might be beneficial to start learning a little bit. It might help you in your personal life and would work but you can also like Arip said get around actually without finish especially if it's a startup company or if you're doing a little bit more IT or multinational companies so yes totally you can do it without finish as well and there are some companies I'll just add to that is like I, I went to Spain basically a couple of times and oh my god like the waiters and you, you just can't you have like you're speaking a different language and even if you initiate in english they just reply back in spanish uh same goes with with visiting france so there like you really need to learn 
you know, A1, A2, like basics really quickly. Otherwise you just can't survive. But in Finland and of course in Scandinavian countries, it's uh, very different. Everyone is, everyone knows that you, like you're not going to speak the local language and they're actually quite proud or, or, res or respectful if you do speak it, like they encourage you to speak, um, but you don't need to know it like in some other European countries. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree with you. That's really good answers. So these were all the questions that I had prepared. Um, so now, you have been very active and asking questions in the chat. So now we will have a little Q&A. So the first question is, how much do you practice public speaking at your business masters? So uh, Anna, what do you say you practice public speaking? Um, yes, I would say constantly, which is maybe not directly through public speaking courses, but because we have so many interactive lectures and projects and we have to sometimes work for companies, you have to quite often present for the panel of, of the like uh, company representatives or for your professor. So I would say it's quite a common uh, task and you get quite good at that eventually. Yeah. Yeah. Do you agree, uh, Ni and Arib? Yeah, I would say the best way to hone your public speaking skill is by practicing it constantly. And Alto is the provide very good environment for you to practice it, either in the classroom or outside the classroom. So business business speaking and communication skills are like they are underrated, but they're so valued for the company that you work for for whichever role. Uh, so do do spend some time, you know, working on those. Of course, like taking a course in, in communication, like you would think, ah, of course, that's not going to help me much, but it actually does because you do get to communicate uh, through email to certain different stakeholders. Uh, you get to speak, you get to uh, negotiate. So there's a negotiation course uh, in at, at Alt that, that is for, I, I believe it's for everyone, uh, but mainly for, for business students. You can also take that. And that gives you really good information, like how do you, how does, how is the other part, uh, you know, party thinking, like how, what sort of answers should you uh, come up with? So uh, those courses do take and uh, sort of enrich in your knowledge in communication and, and business speaking or public speaking. Thank you. So the next question is, what time does the main business campus work? Can we stay and work there till the night? Do you know how long it's open? Um, that's a good question. I I might be wrong with that, but I think it is not open all night long. It is open something like until 10 p.m. on the normal days and maybe less on the week weekends. So I think it's possible to stay there quite late, but not the whole uh, kind of like uh, 24 hours for sure. There's there's one study hub though, the study hub student student hub. Uh, in the economy Aokyo, that's basically open 24 seven. So you can actually go there and, you know, I mean, you don't need to book the place. You can use your student card uh, and, and you can use it and you can go there and use the space freely. So there's TVs, there's, you know, different computers that, that you can uh, use for your study work. Um, ideally, if, if you want to go, you can also go in there and, and relax with your friend. Uh, but and that's what I meant by facilities, that it has those 24-7 facilities. Uh, and yes, as Anastasia pointed out, uh, the main campuses are open until uh, sometimes until 9.30, but usually until 10. Uh, and there are different timings for, for the summer times um, as well. Thank you. So the next question is, uh, did you do your bachelor's in another country? And if so, does studying in a Finnish university or Alta differ from that greatly uh, so yes um we would like to start uh, maybe me oh uh i did my bachelor here but i did spend one year for university in my home country which is vietnam and i can spot some uh, major difference like um education in vietnam is very theoretical but here in finland people uh, uh, i was taught very particle skills um, not that the knowledge is ignored, like I also learn a lot of like uh, useful knowledge, 
but their soft skills is also very important. And in, in Finland, uh, we have very practical approach. And I, I do feel that uh, what you learn at school and what skills you uh, acquire during the school is really what you're going to use in your career. So, yeah. I... That's a good answer. Thank you. Um, do Arib or Anna have anything you would like to add? Um, I, even though my bachelor's was in Finland, maybe one thing I noticed comparing, for example, with Austria, where I am right now, is that it's a little stricter, actually, with some things like attendance and uh, missing the classes, while in, in Alto, for example, I noticed that it was kind of more flexible. Like if you discuss it with a professor, if it's a valid reason like work or something else, <clears throat> I noticed that it was much more easy to kind of reschedule, make it up uh, offline or watch the recorded lecture. At least that was my personal experience. Very flexible. And same here, I've, I've, unfortunately, unfortunately, Fortunately, unfortunately, studied in Finland um, already at Alto University during my, uh, you know, stint in Mikkeli, same as me. Uh, so, with other universities and other students, um, some similar stuff with with attendance. Apart from Mikkeli, you need to have a very strict, uh, you know, attendance there. Uh, but yes, typically, what I really like is the the student sort of feedback to the teachers, and that's quite transparent. So. Uh, it encourages both the the teachers or well the professors to do well and also receive uh, feedback towards the end of the course and hopefully they will you know implement it for for the next course as well. So the the feedback is uh, transparent and you know we can rate the teachers because at the end of the day we are the customers of of uh, of, of, of uh, Alto. So yeah, overall overall nice. That's really nice to hear. Thank you. Um, so the following question is, um, is it hard to move and work in another Schengen country after I finished my studies? Um, do you know anything about this question? Maybe I can give one comment, which might not be completely accurate, but uh, since usually if you are from non-EU country originally and you come, for example, to Finland, you get a residence permit for studies, which is now, by the way, actually much better. It's I think you get it for the whole duration of your studies, which is like two years, for example. But as far as I know, that permit is only, in a sense, valid for Finland, meaning that you can travel to other countries in the EU, but if you move somewhere else, you would still need to, I think, get the permit to that country from scratch. So, to be honest, I'm not sure if that would like help in that respect, if you have a permit in Finland to get another permit in a different country. It needs to be probably, again, this process, uh, like, like, like the way you started off in Finland. Yeah, that's good information. Thank you. Um, so then the following question is, say there is a need to create a conference or a hackathon type event. Uh, what does it take to organize events at Aldo? Um, so do you have any experience in this? Um, I could jump in maybe again. Um, first of all, there are actually amazing hackathons at Aldo, such as Junction. Actually, a friend of mine was uh, in the team of organizing Junction last year. So it's an incredible event and you don't have to necessarily be a pro at coding. You can kind of also do a little bit other tasks as well and contribute to the team in the other way. So check out uh, Aldo kind of like hackathons. I think there is also a second one uh, apart from that. But secondly, I think relatively, if you have any ideas, for example, you want to establish a new association or a new club, you can certainly do that. I have, uh, well, kind of not a friend, an acquaintance from accounting who was our um, alumni uh, like guide. And he was the one who actually established the Alto Cocktails, which is a very famous association at Aldo. And they just did it with a couple of friends because they were thinking, yeah, we would like to have some cocktails on campus. And they just set it up. They got some grant. And you can certainly do that at Aldo. That's really good advice. Yeah, I think so too. Um, so then 
we have another question. Um, is there any support for international students to make the arrival at Alt a little bit easier? Uh, do you know of any support? I can say that there's a lot of communities. Uh, firstly, it depends, like of course, which which uh, program you're taking to, to some extent. Because if you go to the Mikkeli campus, which is international business, uh, you, you will receive well, obviously, a lot of information from there. But it would be the community part. So uh, when when I arrived and I kind of got the emails uh, from my tutors, but also from the op operations coordinator, like what it, what it, when exactly is the study is going to be like, and then uh there like you can stay connected with a few individuals of course you can stay connected with us so when i got into i started like quickly searching for people that have been either studying in that program or people in the same situation as me to look for houses uh for instance um so that community is obviously going to be large uh there is another community on facebook for alto international students as well that i'm part of uh so that obviously helps for for connecting and and, and getting other parts because you need to even if you find a house you need to uh go to the um like you need to understand where to get certain furnitures which you which you might not have any clue about so there's going to be people that are, are going to help you um did i miss anything anastasia or lee i think it was great yeah i think it was really good too so that was actually the last question we will take for this time uh, but it was really nice that you were so active and asking so many amazing questions. Um, so now that you have listened to this webinar, hopefully you feel more inspired to apply to Alta. And if you wish to do so, the application period is from 1st of December to 2nd of January. Um, and also if you have questions about applying to Alta, then there will be a, another webinar on Thursday hosted by the Alta Admission Services. So there you can join. Or then if you can't attend on Thursday, you can also send uh, the admission services an email on admissions at alto.fi. Yes, and also if you have more general questions about studying at Alta, uh, we student ambassadors would be happy to help you. And you can reach us on Unibody, where you can write us a message. Uh, or then uh, we also have Friday coffee sessions where we where you can chat with us and so on. So there you can join. Uh, or then you can um, visit our website, alto.fi slash studies for the latest news, events, and just links to, to useful websites. Yes, and also if you're interested, we will have a, a webinar about master's programs in marketing, which will be the 20th of October from 2 to 3 p.m. Finnish time. So, and there will be a link in the chat where you can register for this one. But yeah, thank you very much to our panelists for the very interesting and good answers. And also a big thank you to everyone joining us today. And we hope to see you on campus next year. Thank you.